please, may you please unmute yourself and share with us the bread that our Father has given unto you this morning. Over to you, Doctor. I greet you all in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. I'm very happy to see you, ladies and gentlemen from South Africa and from everywhere else that you could be following. Once again, I just want to express gratefulness for this prayer group, this prayer ministry that is doing wonders. And I want to appreciate that yesterday you took time to say prayers for my sick daughter. And I believe that uh, God willing later today, we will be released from hospital. But uh, without saying much, let's go straight into the word of God. And the message I want to share with you today is titled, you may be useful without being visible. You may be useful without being visible. You may be useful without being visible. My brothers and sisters, the limelight is very attractive. When you are up on stage and everyone recognizes your efforts and they are cheering you for having done so well, and your name is up on placards, you are being celebrated. It looks like this is the best place to be. But I just came to tell you today in the name of Jesus that the limelight is attractive and celebrated, but we forget that 90% of success depends on the invisible. And so I just came to encourage you that we can all be very useful without being visible. You see, friends, we all strive to be useful. And we should all strive to be useful, but we should not strive to be visible. Because visibility is for the few, but usefulness is for every, everybody. Political wrangles are always around visibility and not usefulness. Every time people disagree on something about leadership, about doing this or doing that, it is always about visibility and not usefulness. And that's why I came to remind you today that you may be useful without being visible. Aim at being useful. Let me invite you to read Luke chapter 8, verse 1, verse 2, and verse 3. Luke chapter 8, verse 1, verse 2, and verse 3. The Bible says in Luke chapter 8, verse 1, verse 2, and verse 3, that after this, Jesus traveled about, about from one town and village to another, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God. The 12 were with him. Jesus was with the 12 disciples. He was moving from one town to another, one village to another. And the Bible says in verse 2 that also some women who had been cured of evil spirits and diseases, Mary called Magdalene, on whom seven demons had come out. Joanna, the wife of Chusa, the manager of Herod's household, Susanna and many others, these women were helping to support them out of their own means. Many times we think that Jesus only had 12 disciples. A big mistake that many people who think understand the Bible claim every time. They say, oh, Jesus had only 12 disciples. We even go to the children's class and say, children, how many disciples did Jesus have? And when the children raise their hand and say 12, you say, yes, clap for that one. Jesus had 12 disciples. But Jesus had more than 12 disciples. There was a time he sent out the 72, the 70. He sent them out. And the Bible says they were his disciples. And now the Bible tells us that Jesus is going from village to village with the 12. But they were not just 12 because there was a team of women, the Bible says, that were helping to support this team. We hear of the team of 12 casting out demons. We hear of the team of 12 going around preaching and, and doing things, but we don't hear of them eating. 
We don't hear of them, uh, how they dress up, how they bathe, where they sleep. And who is taking care of these things? Who is managing these things? And then the Bible in Luke chapter 8, verse 1, 2, and 3, just gives us a sneak preview on what was happening. That, hey, listen, while all you hear is about Jesus and the 12, there was another team that is not visible but is useful. There were women who traveled with Jesus from place to place. Even when Jesus was arrested and was being persecuted before crucifixion, the Bible says that there were women present. As Jesus carries the cross going, going to where he will be crucified, he turns to the women of Jerusalem and says, do not cry for me, because these women had accompanied Jesus throughout his ministry. These women are not visible, but they are useful. The Bible says that these women were helping to support them out of their own means. I want to suggest to you, my brothers and sisters, that the useful people have certain characteristics. Number one, they have been saved. The Bible says that these are women that Jesus had cast out demons from. They had been saved. They had had an experience with Jesus. Anyone who has had an experience with Jesus will not have a problem being useful. The reason why many of us are not useful in the house of God, in the church of God, in the lives of people is because we have not received salvation. The day we truly receive salvation, the day we truly interact with Jesus, we will become useful. Number two, you notice that these women, after being been, getting saved, were no longer interested in the limelight. They were interested in being useful. They did not jostle for space and say, hey, don't just say 12 disciples. Can you say we are 13, we are 15, we are 17? Women, we are also here. Hey, women rights, we need fair representation. No, they kept doing their thing in a cool way, supporting the group. If these women had pulled out, indeed, there would have been a crisis with the team. Jesus would have provided definitely, but these women were critical in offering support. The third thing you notice is that these saved women were providing from their own means. They were not managing money that others have collected. They were managing money that they themselves had raised, the things they themselves had raised. The reason why there is very little support in our ministries, in our churches, in our groups, is because the people who are supposed to offer help are not converted. And so the Bible says there were women who were not visible, but they were very useful to the ministry of Jesus Christ. You see, when you read verse 3, it, it says, and many others, the Bible is telling you, listen, if we decided to list everybody who was supporting Jesus, I mean, we will not finish the list of women. So the Bible tells us that, hey, there, there is Mary Magdalene, there is Joanna, wife of Chusa, there is Susanna, and, and then the Bible says, listen, let's stop it there. There are many others. Brothers and sisters, my desire is that I may be useful and not visible. Because when you are useful, you have added value and you are listed in heaven. But when you strive to be visible, you may be visible without adding any value. But I want to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that anyone who is useful is much more important to the team. And so the message I just came to share with you is that you may be useful without being visible. Get encouraged. Don't strive to be the chairperson. Don't strive to be the secretary, the treasurer. Just strive to offer some contribution to the team. And as we celebrate women this month in South Africa, it is important to take note that there were many women who offered a lot of support to Jesus and the 12 disciples more than we will ever know. And that these women made a huge difference in the ministry of Jesus Christ. And without these women, the ministry will not have been the same. And this should encourage us that we can be useful without being visible. The greatest struggle today is that there are people who think that being visible is more critical than being useful. But you need to know, ladies and gentlemen, that even in our homes, 
while the father may be visible, but the home is run 100% by women, by mothers who may not be visible in the scene, but they are the ones who know exactly what is needed and what is happening. You can be useful without being visible. The greatest contribution is in life is not your visibility, but your usefulness. But lest I be accused of being biased towards women, I will invite you to read Luke chapter 23, verse 50, 51, and 52. Just we find also some men who are useful, but not necessarily visible. And then we will, we will go into prayer. The Bible says in Luke chapter 23, verse 50, 51, and 52, that after Jesus had died on the cross, there was a man named Joseph. When you read other gospels, it says a very rich man by the name of Joseph from Arimathea, a member of the council, a good and upright man. The Bible says who had not consented to the decision for the crucifixion of Jesus. He came from the Judean town of Arimathea and he himself was waiting for the kingdom of God. And he went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. When the disciples ran away from Jesus, the 12 ran away from Jesus and Jesus was left alone. There was a man courageous enough to go and tell Pilate, hey, give me the body of Jesus I want to bury. When, when everyone had decided, when this critical assignment of burying Jesus was needed, somebody useful came up. Somebody we don't know whether he ever cast out any demons. Somebody we don't know whether he ever established any church. Somebody we don't know what he contributed. Did, did he preach anywhere? Did he go with the 72? We don't know. But one thing we know, when a need arose, he stepped up and took care of the need. And the Bible says in verse 53 that he took it down, wrapped it in linen cloth and placed it in a tomb and cut out that was cut out in the rock, one which no one had been laid. He didn't form a WhatsApp group asking people to raise money. He had the money, useful, but not visible. And the Bible tells us when you read Luke, John chapter 19, verse 39 to 40, that this man was not alone. He was together with another useful, but not visible character by the name Nicodemus. He was accompanied by Nicodemus, the man who had earlier visited Jesus at night. We don't hear of this man after visiting Jesus at night until when need arises. My prayer, ladies and gentlemen, is that I will be useful when need arises. You see, many of the problems we face in our groups is that there are people who want to be visible even when no need has arisen. They want to be heard. They bring controversies. They bring crisis so that they can be seen. But when need arises, they disappear. That's not what we want to be. We want to be useful and not visible. And let me say this, ladies and gentlemen, that prayer is one of those things that is useful but not visible. When I'm praying for you in privacy, you may not know. It may not be visible, but it is useful. I may not take up on a microphone and pray using King James Version English language, thou our Lord, thee our savior, and make all the big prayers in public that is visible. But I may be praying quietly in Sizulu, in Sitswana, in whatever language, and that is more useful than being visible. I want to challenge you friends that it is time for us to strive at being useful and not at being visible. May God grant us his grace as we become useful in this hour of prayer. That after our usefulness, those who will be visible, let them be visible. May God be gracious to us in Jesus' name. Let's pray. Father in heaven, you have been very kind to us to remind us that we can be very useful without being visible. Mm. Have mercy on us. Save us from the struggles and strife that come from the desire to be visible. And we pray that we will just be satisfied with being useful. Mm. As we go into prayer, we pray that our prayers will be useful to ourselves and to many others. It is in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen.